Hi, and welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman. Today I have a great Valentine's quilt project for you. It's either a table cover or a wall quilt or even a pillow cover. However you'd like to use it, there's a PDF attached in the description box below. You want to grab that and you'll get to use your two and a half inch squares. So get your container of two and a half inch squares. You're going to need lights and mediums and darks. And we'll get to the tabletop here in just a moment and I'll share with you how easy it is to put this together. So here is one of the blocks. I've actually made a couple and I've attached it with a sash in the center. It's going to be adorable and I'm going to make the other two here for you. I'm going to show you how you put each of these together. But you're simply using two and a half inch squares. You're going to be grabbing a few of the three inch squares as well for these half square triangles. And then once we make the half square triangles, we'll trim them down to two and a half inch squares so that they work within the contents of this uh, quilt. This is a 12 and a half inch block. Uh, before it's put into the quilt, it will finish in the quilt at 12 inches. And here is the PDF that gives you the instruction, uh, the requirements that you'll need to pull from your stash. So you're going to need two and a half inch squares predominantly. You're going to need some three inch squares that are in the darks and the lights. You're going to need some one and a half inch with the fabric strips. In fact, let me pull this over here. So I have a variety of um, two and a half inch squares, every, anywhere from very, very dark to light. And um, my colors are basically burgundies, lavenders, and pinks in that family. Uh, these are the three inch squares that I'm gonna be using to make my half square triangles. These are the little one and a half inch squares that are cornerstones, both in the center of the quilt and out in the borders. These are the sashes uh, that I'm using for the center, and these are my outside borders that I'm going to need, and those are all one and a half inch with the fabric strips. So this is what um, is required, and again, that's all in the PDF for you. Everything that you need is in here. Now let's see how to lay out this block. I started laying out my blocks for, or my squares for the block. However, we do need a total of four half square triangles for the, this block and then four for the last block. So this, I'm gonna make um, two more blocks here because I've already got two of them finished. So I have taken a three inch light with a three inch dark and I've paired them together, right sides together. I've drawn a diagonal line from one corner to the other. So I have uh, four pairs and they will end up making eight half square triangles when I'm finished. What I'm gonna do is take these to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch a, a scant quarter of an inch on both sides of that blue line. So let me go do that real quick. The half square triangle units have been sewn as you can see. And so what I'm going to do, and you've seen me do this before, I like to uh, cut from stitching line to stitching line as I cut them apart. And the reason that I do that is because that gets rid of a dog ear already on that end. And then you can either cut them apart using your scissors or cut them apart using the rotary cutter, whichever you want. But with every pair, you are obtaining two half square triangle units. So here we have two of them. And what they need to, what we need to do now is to get them squared up to two and a half inches. Every single one of these will need to be squared up to two and a half inches. Let me cut these apart and I'll show you how we're gonna square them up. I've squared these up to two and a half inches. I'm using my Clearly Perfect slotted trimmer. I'm using trimmer A, which has the half inch increments, and I am lining up this two and a half inch stitching line here on the stitching line of my triangle, trimming away the excess. There isn't a whole lot that has to be trimmed away, but it's really important that gets removed because that really will affect your um, block. It will not go together properly if you don't remove that. So I have all of these um, trimmed up to two and a half inches. Now I'm going to take them over and get them pressed. I am simply going to press mine to the dark. So I'll get them pressed and I'll bring them back. Here are my eight half square triangles. I'm going to go get four of these placed in my block. And this right here can be put in your crumbs, you can make a confetti quilt with that or use it for dog stuffing, whatever you need to do with that. So let's look at the block now. 
hopefully you can see the entire block here. I've laid out all of my squares. These are all my two and a half inch squares. And now I need to add my um, half square triangles to finish out the heart. It just makes that curve that goes around there. And as you're probably familiar, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, when I put my uh, blocks together and even my quilts, I like to web them. And that means that I'm going to start in the upper left here on the top two, and I'm going to bring these together. I'm going to bring them to my sewing machine and sew them. I'm going to get the next two, put them together, bring them here and sew those next. I, I call this webbing the block because the entire block is webbed with a thread that you're stitching all the way down each of the rows. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. It also helps you keep everything in order. Nothing gets out of order. And here's this last two set here. Whoops. All right, so I have this all sewn together. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that excess strings. And if I bring it back over here, you can see that it's completely webbed together. And I don't do any pressing as I'm sewing these together. I take care of that at the very end. So that first row is all webbed together. Now I'm going to add this row and sew it to this. So I'm going to grab my length of um, that for row one and two. I'm going to add this right like that and bring it over here. Oops. And I'm going to open up the second one, grab this one from here, put it right sides together. Open this up, grab the next one, put it right sides together, grab the next one, right sides together, next, Last one right here. And I'll continue this all the way across. I'm going to open this side up and I'm going to grab this one right here from row four and add it to row three and just continue on down until I've sewn the entire block together. I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. It's been sewn, so it's been webbed this direction. Now I'm going to sew the rows together. So the columns are sewn together, and now I'm going to sew the rows together. And I'm simply going to flip it like this, and I'm going to nest every seam. It might be good to go ahead and pin those nests with each seam to make sure that they stay just the way you want them. I have them row by row flipped every other direction and you'll see what I mean by that here in just a minute. Let me get this pinned for you first. I'm feeling um, each seam and making sure that it's nested beautifully and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a moment as well. All right, 
So every, every one of these seam allowances is nested to the next one. So everything lays nice and flat. And everything on the first row, as you can see, the seam allowances are all going to the left. And then the next time that I um, do another row there, all of the seam allowances will end up being pressed to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this. I'll show you what that looks like just in just a minute. I've just sewn that top row together, row one and two, or column one and two is all sewn now. And next I'm going to sew the next unit. There we go. And I have not done any pressing yet. I am simply pressing the seam allowances with my fingers toward the right or the left. So the first row you can see is, was pressed to the left. The second row is going to go to the right. And I'm pinning each as I'm nesting them just to ensure that those seam allowances stay facing either left or right. So that will be row two and three that I'll sew together. You might not be able to see it so well right now, but all of these seam allowances are going this direction. All of these seam allowances are going this direction. These seam allowances are going this direction. And now I'll add the next row. Let me move this out of the way here. I'll add the next row, get it sewn, and the seam allowances are all going to go to the left. And I'll continue this all the way until the entire block is finished. I've completed all four of the blocks. They need to be pressed and squared up to 12 and a half inches. Then you're going to sew a 12 and a half inch one, uh, by one and a half inch uh, sash in between the two hearts. I'm going to do that between these as well. Then we're going to sew a sash in between a, a little tiny one inch, one and a half inch square. Let me pull that over here so you can see what I'm referring to. So we're going to sew this to two of these. And then this is going to go in between here. And then we can put the center of it together. And then we're going to start adding the outer borders. So I'm going to sew this, I'm going to sew these pieces together, and then I'm going to sew it as a unit. I'll bring it back to the table in just a minute. I've put it together, and this would be adorable as a bed quilt. You could make a number of these uh, four patch units and put together a great bed size quilt or a lap quilt. There's so much you can do with this. What I plan to do is simply add some, an inside and an outside border. I'm going to use this lighter fabric here for my inside border and this darker fabric for my outside border and I'm going to use these little one and a half inch squares as the cornerstones in the pattern and you, when you take a look at the PDF you'll see what I'm referring to here. So I'm simply going to cut those, add my cornerstones and uh, put the outside border together. I'll quickly do that and I'll show you how that looks. I have the little quilt finished it's really adorable. It can be a wall quilt. It can cover a table. It can go over the back of a couch. I have found this white rickrack, and I'm thinking I might actually add this on that inside border all the way around. That might be kind of cute for, for this wall quilt. Let me know what you think. Should I add that? <laughs> So I've just got to uh, get it quilted then and get it bound and get it up on the wall. Just got a couple of weeks before Valentine's. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial on making this beautiful Valentine quilt. Let me know how you're going to use it. Are you going to make a pillow? Are you going to make a table topper like this? Is it going to be a wall quilt? Are you going to be really adventurous and make it into a bed size quilt or a lap size quilt? Let me know in the comments how you plan to use it. Thank you so much for watching today. If you do like the content that I provide, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with your friends, with your family, and with your quilt guilds. Thank you so much for doing that. Have a wonderful day, and until next time, happy quilting.